Hello, my name is Nikola and I'm the author of Robin and Coins and I'm developing a sequel called Robin and Coins 2. Uh, this demo version was available in the Steam Next Fest June 22 edition and in case you missed it I'm going to showcase what you could have seen in the demo. Uh, for starters this is the main menu in the demo and in the lower left corner you can see an icon of the keyboard that's because you can use the keyboard to navigate the menu but if I connect the gamepad you're going to notice that this icon has been changed to the gamepad so now I can use the gamepad instead uh, the game supports both Xbox or X input and direct input gamepads and you can change the language for now there's only English and Serbian you can change the window size you can lower the volume of the music uh, you can reconfigure the keyboard it says do not use special keys but like if you use space control or out it's going to be mapped properly and the most interesting menu that we need to look at right now is the gameplay menu uh, these are options that are going to affect your gameplay like the easy start for example you can start with 10 continues instead of 5 I'm going to disable that ignore the controller is option for people who have a real or flight stick that might interfere with their keyboard or the gamepad uh, vibration that's for people who have sensitive hands who don't like vibration and so on we're going to leave only the hints now and I'm going to show you the hints later so let's start a new game as you could see there's a protection for not overwriting the existing save game and this is the first level as you can see we have a goblin that's a bit older than in the first game there's a beard and after the midnight attack on his fast food joint he's left to find his coins and the recipe book well in this first screen you can see like many animations and stuff that were not available in the first game you can look down to see what's below you and let's see what there is to the left that's a parrot and we have a well if you play the first game you know what can happen in the well and these are the hints so when we, when we were in the gameplay menu we were looking at the hints and I left them on you can disable them by pressing B immediately this hint in particular is showing us not to go into the fire so what's going to happen if I don't listen to the hint? It's not going to be very good for me. Over here we have a hint that says look around, there might be something to find. And as I said, if you play the first game, you know what it is. You can jump into the well and find a secret passage here. You need a key to open this treasure chest and the white circle the halo above the chest is also one type of the hint that's showing us that we need a white key this is very easy level the first level in the entire game as you can see this is a puzzle piece that shows in the pop-up hint which means that we need to solve a puzzle in order to progress to the further to the right 
if I were to touch these spears, I would lose another life, and I'm not going to do that right now. I am going to show you what we missed over here. So this is back to the beginning. It's a circular level meant for exploring. So over here it's a little balcony with flowers and if you try to jump up there you're going to notice we cannot reach it. This is because we do not have a double jump yet. It is something that's possible to unlock by spending the coins that we're collecting in the levels. Here it's going to show us what the default action button is. In this case it's space or B on the gamepad. If you look now you know you're going to notice that the bridge has been destroyed. The training dummy in the back was torn down and if we try to jump there's even a wheel that's on fire. So we cannot go upstairs without the double jump, so for now this is the only part of the level that we can explore. This area is going to get some details later, this is just like a alpha version. And this is it. This was supposed to be a boss fight, but the bosses field protection field, the fact of field, whatever you want to call it, failed and the boss decided for his to retreat. And after the finishing the first level, we're going to find ourselves in the in-game store where you're only using the coins that you've collected in the levels. And as you can see there's extra life. This will enable you to start every level with four lives instead of three. There's double jump, 99 continues. As you might remember, I've started with 5. You can also use the easier start option in gameplay menu to start with 10 continues. The Shrinky in a Blinky is already unlocked in this demo and you're going to see it the first time we encounter a crawl space under the platforms. It allows you to shrink to a small size and go through the platform instead of around it. And through side concoction is going to enable you to see hidden portals and collectibles and stuff. For now we're going to buy a double jump elixir which is enabled for free in this demo. So when I buy it as you can see available coins went into minus uh, negative. So this is the first level that we finished as you can see after you finish a level you get a star for finishing it. If you collect all the coins, you're going to get a second star. And the third star is if you finish under the part time. In this case, I did not do that. But you don't have to do all of these three things at the same time. You can do them separately. This is the store. And even like on the map menu, it shows you what you have unlocked. And this is the first real level that you're going to visit right now. As you can see, I have double jump, which is going to be very helpful. This skull shows me that I should avoid the little crabs because they're waving their pincers about the head. So it's not possible to actually jump on them. And as you can see, See, the enemies on the beach are trying to avoid being overheated. Right now I'm just collecting coins. This is again one of the very easy levels collected on type levels where you just collect everything you can find. And this here is an example of the Shrinking the Blinky upgrade that, as I said, is already unlocked in this demo. So if I just move close, the goblin is going to shrink 
and be able to go through. As you can see, if I didn't have Shrinky and Double Jump, I wouldn't be able to go here. But don't worry, all the levels are planned and thoroughly tested. So even if you can't go one way or one direction, you can always find a way to return or to finish the level without the upgrades. All the levels are going to be, you'll be able to finish them without any upgrades. But of course it's much more fun with the upgrades and stuff. So I'm not going to go all the way there. Because it's not my intention to review all the levels fully. The next level is sharing the same tile set, the sand and the beach. But you'll see that it uses uh, different background details in order to achieve some variety. And we have a seagull here. Pufferfish. When you play the game or demo, don't let this little boat fool you. It doesn't go all the way from left to right, it makes several turns. So you need to be patient and actually watch it and learn its pattern. Also, there's a tricky spot here. And this is our second puzzle. If you paid attention, you could have seen that many of these boxes in the level have fish. And above the door it's a hammer, so what we need to do is set fish here, like where we come from, and then set hammer here where we're going to. So I'm just going to press B on the gamepad or action button, so there's a fish, and there's a hammer, and we can move forward. As I said, these are very easy levels, nothing complicated, and this is the first level that is going to be of a large size. If you look back, this was small, medium, medium, and this is the first large level. What it means is that it's much larger than these previous few levels, and it's going to have a maze-like structure. So, I'm going to show you only the part of this level. I can look down, but it's not very really helpful here. It's very helpful here. Now I know that I can actually jump down. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use Shrinky and Winky to enter this area. Look how this so changes color and telegraphs that it's going to go down. But if you're just like paying attention to the environmental clues and telegraphing, you're going to be perfectly safe in this world. And over here, I could go over there to the right if I have Shrinky and Blinky and shorten the path to the end of the level. But instead, I'm, or I could go here, but instead I'm following the default route, the one that you have to go to if you don't have any upgrades. Just to show you a little bit. And we should look down, not very safe. As you can see, if I use this shortcut, I wouldn't have to deal with those jumping spiders or whatever they are. Sometimes these enemies are going to jump forward towards you and sometimes they're going to go in a different direction to trick you or to showcase their face. And this is the chest that we've opened thanks to that key. 
from the beginning of the level. Of course, these chests are not required, but they do give you at least three coins. So it's always good to open them if you can. And here we have the blue key. But I didn't really plan to pick up. And these stepping stones are, I think, familiar from the first game to anyone who played it. This is just a shortcut. If I went to the right, see here where that flying note was, I would be able to fall, fall down here and avoid the mushroom and the green mist. But in that case, I would also avoid the blue key. So while well, you can use shortcuts to save yourself some time, you can also miss a lot of the level. And also here, you're going to notice that it becomes a different color before it goes down. Here's the blue key. Again, these stepping stones function the same way they did in the first game. Actually, very good in my own game, but. That's how it is, you play it a dozen times, testing and making sure everything is working fine. And then you lose precision when you don't play for a while. Ah, you've seen that, right? I have only one left, one life left, so I better try not to fall down again. Okay, this is the end of this level. So from now here, from now on, it's going to be a little bit easier because we have another medium level. This one has a new mechanics called Portal. Let me just get rid of this guy. So over here, I don't know if you can see it in the right top corner, there's like a monolith that's not working. That's a portal. And if we use this key, See, I died here and I had only one life before. In the previous game, this would be the end because I would start the level with only one life. But because in this game, you can exit and then go to continue and open map and choose the level that you want to revisit. Because maybe you've stopped for the day and you want to continue tomorrow or another day. Or maybe you've upgraded double jump and now you want to go back to the level that you've already been to to reach the areas that you couldn't reach before and collect all the coins. Now you can start every level with three lives. And like you've seen, there is an upgrade to start the level with all four lives. And as you can see, the, there's a portal now that's active because I took the key and that portal is going to take me to this area. See where the coins are? 
there's no way for me to reach in with double jump. I have to use the portal to get there. It's not anything amazing, but let's remember these are the initial rows. And of course you can always look down to be sure you're not going to jump into something terrible. And this is the first real boss fight. It's not difficult, it's just the first boss that's introducing you that there's going to be bosses and stuff. At first I intended to make all these fiery bombs to hurt you, but I decided on just them hitting you from above, hurting you, but the fire is actually not dangerous. You can walk past. The only level to, the only way to actually hurt him is to jump on his head. If you jump on the propeller or the ship or something you're going to be hurt or miss him. Like I said it's very easy, you just wait for him. And then in the demo there are two more levels. I'm not going to show you both of them. I'm just going to show the snow one to show some particle effects. As you can see there is snow falling in the background. And also whenever I touch these snowy platforms, we're going to lose some snow that's going to fall down. I don't know if you can see it. And another thing that has been requested in the first game, this hanging spike that's moving right now, stalactite, uh, in the first game, if it fell on the enemy or something like that, it wouldn't hurt them. And people requested that you were able to kill an enemy by using... I failed. Yesterday I was able to do it, but that video didn't record sound. So here we are. You saw me failed killing the enemy. So that's it. We all have another level here that I'm not going to show you. And there's also a secret level. If I lost all of the continuous and died a lot, I would go into the underground where I would have only one life and would be a spirit of sorts, goblin spirit, and would have to assemble the golden branch in order to resurrect myself with a another 10 continuous. See, if I go to continue, I'm going to have all the levels that I've been here unlocked and saved. Unless I'm in the underground, in that case I need to resurrect myself to gain access to this map again. That would be all for Goblin and Coins 2 demo. I'm sorry if you missed it in the Steam Next Fest, but it's still available on Steam and you can still play it for yourself and I'm open to listening to any feedback. If you have some comments, you want to discuss something, you can join the Goblin and Coins Discord or post a comment below. Thank you for watching.